right, so we're going to get into the um, contour drawing now. We just saw the finished painting, and this is like a resort style um, painting where maybe you're at like a nice golf resort or a um, exotic vacation, and you're at you know at the beach, and you have there's a resort there, and you want to kind of capture the the beauty of the building that you know the uh, resort that you're staying at, and you want to maybe capture a small part of the building. Uh, of the resort that you're staying at. This is just like a great idea. Something like this, vacation, um, you know, you're out there, you're having a great time. You know, you get your lawn chair, you have your sketchbook, your paints, you have your palette, you have a, your brush and a little water pail, little water bucket, and you just sit there and you have a fun time. You have a little table set up next to you and you just put your paint, your your watercolor uh, um, water bucket on the on the table and your tissues and your paper towels if you need them and you have your palette, small palette with you. We'll spray this palette a little bit, juice up, juice up the watercolors here. So I just use a small a water spritzer bottle. Yeah. Get some of the paints uh, moist there and, and, and we're just gonna when we do this, maybe if we have a sketchbook and we're out on vacation, like again, just have that great feeling of vacation, we're out somewhere, or we're having a great time, we're just going to take like a half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe in the beginning part of the day or toward the end of the day and just do a little quick couple sketches and some paint, you know, a little bit of a sketch and some painting. Perfect time to do this. You can capture uh, parts of the um, places that you're staying at on vacation, no matter where it is. Um, you know, it could be uh, villas uh, along uh, some exotic beaches, or it could be, you know, mountain, you know, cabins in the mountains, whatever it is. But uh, here we're just going to have a nice uh, feeling of some maybe exotic vacation, somewhere hot, sunny, the islands, maybe long, uh, the south. Uh, in the United States, there's beautiful resorts in the south. Um, so... We're just going to have a good time here and enjoy. And uh, we're just going to take a look here and say, all right, we're going to take a look at our structure. And I'm going to contour draw. I'm just going to go across and there's a palm tree here. So I'll just do the palm tree like so. So here's the roof. And I'm trying to just uh, go with the flow here. No reason to uh, get stressed when you're doing your contour drawings. You just go with the flow. You keep using each each area that you're drawing, you're just trying to relate that to the next area. So that you have the um, the scale of things are quite um, are easier to um, draw accurately if you can And we have the roof here, so I'm just doing the roof areas. Some shadowing. Then we're going to start with our... Uh, We're doing a uh, palm tree here. Like so. So we have a palm tree there. And uh,
And I'm just taking my time drawing the structure here. This is like a tower at the top. So this is an interesting. Draw through and okay, so we're just going to continue our contour drawing now. We're trying to stay close to where we've already. Uh, had some sketching done, some some contour drawing done. You want we want to stay close to those areas where we've already had some drawing done. This way, we can keep using those areas to scale the rest of the. drawing. So here we see we have the it doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to have a A, uh, we capture some details along the way, but we can also paint in some of the details, so we don't have to worry about drawing in every detail. Does that make sense? When you're drawing a contour drawing f before you paint, you can always leave out details because you know you can go later, later on you can go in and paint some of those other details that you're, you might uh, not have uh, put in there. So it's always fine, always acceptable to To leave a little bit of details out and you can always put them back in again. If you think you've gone a little too far with an angle or a line, you just erase a little bit. Here I was a little bit too far with that. So we just And if we go over something, we can always okay. And no need again to do every single detail. We want to capture the overall essence of things. So I have the essence of things here. And you want it to be something that you can remember and say, okay, yes, this is, I remember that uh, beautiful resort we stayed at. Here's, yes, this is it. <clears throat> it looks beautiful. We captured the essence of it, but it's not like you have to have every detail. No one's going to remember every single molding and, you know, something like that, or every doorknob or, you know, any, any kind of very extreme detail. We don't have to worry about that. We just have to get the basic shapes of everything and the location of the, the main um, architectural details of things. That's all we have to do. And, uh, and we'll be fine. We'll be... I'm 
we have some interesting uh, shadowing here. There's some nice shadows along our details, which will be good. This will help us to make a really nice And I might have stretched things out a little bit, you know, here, here and there. I might have, doesn't have to be perfect. That's what I'm trying to say here is you don't have to have a perfect architectural drawing, obviously. You're just getting the essence of what you're seeing. I might have added some extra distance on some of these parts of the building, but I think we'll be fine. Looks good. Okay, so now we have our drawing complete. I'll put some hash marks here. This is going to be a nice dark. And then over here too, we're going to have some some dark shadowing here. Let's try to get those shadow. Try to try to kind of when you're contour drawing and you're drawing and sketching your scene. Try to get the darks in there, hash, put some hash marks in where you see the really, really dark darks so that when you go in and paint, you know that's where you have to get your dark darks in. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to start just putting in some darks here where I know I see the dark areas, the dark windows here. And there's some shadows under here and there's more. Naturally, we have, naturally you always, you'll always have darks underneath the eaves of the roofs. So we have the eaves up here of the roofs and you'll always see the dark areas. It shadows the windows so the windows have dark tonal values um, on the glass. And uh, that should be fine. Okay, so we're gonna come back. We're gonna start painting this beautiful scene and uh, We'll have a lot of fun. This is going to be great. We're going to start doing the darks first. So let's plan on putting in our darks first on this. We're going to do a la prima, all in one go. This is not a glazing style painting or a uh, you know wet and wet type painting. This is going to be an a la prima painting where we just go in and we start painting and we go all the way through and finish in one, pretty much one wash of paint, whether it's uh, light values, tonal values, or darks, but we're going to use a lot of dark paint, a lot of straight paint out of the tube to start with. Once we get that in, then we'll use some more water and, and water down and create some lighter washes, and you'll see how we do it here, but it's really going to be fun. Let's have a great time at this. Again, we're doing a nice resort-style painting, and uh, we're going to just enjoy it and pretend we're here on vacation and uh, we're just going to make some artwork here. This is artwork. We're not going to get too concerned about making it uh, a perfect uh, painting or anything like that. Okay, so we'll be right back. We'll start our painting. Okay, so we're back and we're going to start painting now and uh, we have our drawing complete. You can always, um, when you're doing a drawing like this, or it's an architectural style drawing, you can always use a ruler if you have to. Um, rulers actually work really nicely if you want to get some straight lines, some really beautiful uh, straight lines here and there. So you, you can use some straight lines to get your, uh, to start off with if you want to have some um, accurate straight lines going, let's say, vertically. And maybe a couple horizontal lines if you want to get started with your... You can do that. Even very lightly. And then you can just sort of use those really light lines to kind of guide you as you're drawing your, your drawing with a, a pencil and you're doing a contour drawing. So, um, 
I'm pretty comfortable. I've been drawing a long time. I'm in construction most of my whole life, so I have to draw, sketch, plan things out, do things with uh, pencil and paper all the time, estimate, so forth. So um, I'm used to uh, drawing freehand a lot, but if you need a ruler, no big deal. You can use a ruler to get uh, some uh, angles. Like here, we can maybe, for the chimney up here, we can do the, Okay, so now let's get started with our painting. I'm going to use a number five Da Vinci, Pierre Kalinsky Sable, number five travel brush, fresh clean water. Um, this is a uh, 1503, that's the uh, number of the brush, 1503 series of brush, 1503 Germany, Pierre Kalinsky, Da Vinci number five. Really nice points on these. These are really nice brushes. If you're going to go out and do some painting outdoors, you can just put them like this. Throw them into a nice uh, knapsack or bag or even in your pocket. When you're ready to paint, you take it out. Put it together. You can paint. When you're done painting, you rinse off your brush and you take it off. You take it apart. This way your brush stays good and it doesn't get uh, deformed when you're uh, actually, uh, you put it back in this plastic uh, handle. You put the brush back in there and this way it saves the, the brush itself, the brush hairs from getting all bent and, uh, you know, causing an issue with the uh, getting the, the actual brush hairs all distorted and everything like that. So these are really beautiful brushes especially for outdoors if you're on vacation or traveling or doing some local uh, sketchbook work out out and about so these are great so we'll get started here we'll do our darkest darks start those french ultramarine blue burnt sienna burnt umber some earth tones here and then a nice dark blue french ultramarine blue and then we just sort of try to um, get some darks going here. And I'm looking at my reference photo. Then here we have some clay tile roofs terracotta roofs therefore you can have those little small um, basically they're arch arch type shapes along the uh, along the roof eaves there's some shadowing here for that chimney so here I'm just Taking, taking the approach that I'm going to do my darkest darks first. So this is where you would, once you're done with your sketch, you would look at your, your scene and say, all right, where are my darkest darks? And that's where you would start. Start with your darkest darks. And then you just start going in and doing the darkest darks. And I noticed there's some darks here too, cerulean blue. So I added some cerulean blue, which is a little lighter. It's not as dark as the French ultramarine blue. Cerulean blue is a little lighter. So if you see something a little lighter in tonal value, you know, you put another color in there, another uh, tone to capture the proper uh, tonal value and we have some more and the fun of this is we don't 
we don't go too we could add some cool I mean some warm colors raw sienna We can introduce some warmer tones in there too. Some warmer colors. Then we're going to start working in our terracotta. That is cadmium orange, raw umber. That seems to, with a little bit of burnt umber too. So you want to mix a variable color here. And so we'll start doing some of our And I'm just trying to get those vertical lines. Add a couple darks here and there. And I just remember to stick with my game plan here. I want to make sure I'm using the colors for the roof, the clay tile roof. It's going to be the uh, raw sienna, cadmium red, cadmium orange, a little bit of uh, burnt umber, but mostly the cadmium red, raw sienna, and raw umber. And that will give you a really nice... feeling of that uh, clay tile roof and then we can do some of that down here too and as long as we kind of get that uh, some of these lines you're gonna see me do that Trying to get some of those vertical lines, clay tile roofs, lots of small tiny arch shapes like this, little round shapes like that. And again here we're going to let ourselves have fun. Don't try to paint every detail. Let's just have a good time. S couple splashes there. Sometimes a little bit of finger painting just to change it up a little bit, give it some variation. Even a little bit of blue, some shadowing. Cerulean blue always looks great with orange or any earth tones. So now if I do some cerulean blue, I'm going to put it everywhere. Up here, over here, just like that. A 
raw umber, cadmium orange, cadmium red. We just keep doing the same. color combinations. Then I add some extra water there. Then we take some blue and raw umber and French ultramarine blue and now we're going to start doing a little or umber, French ultramarine blue. Just like that, we'll do some purple. Some purple up here too as well. Then we're going to start working in some green, sap green, raw umber, sap green, raw sienna, more sap green. Splashing and some And a little bit of cerulean blue. Do these really quickly. No messing around. We do not want to take a lot of time with the uh, palm trees and things because the more you try to paint them accurately the worse they're going to be so we just do the basic shapes these type of shapes like this and there's a couple that go up like that and there's a couple shapes over here Some shadow shapes here and there under these areas with some purple. Okay, good enough. Abstract, we're not trying to nail every detail here. That would not look good. So we're gonna again do some sap green, raw umber. Some purple and blue dark, like the darker colors, uh, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, French ultramarine blue, purple, and we do some darker darks. Under the shadowing. splashing and some darker darks a 
some of the branches are shadowing and then I'm trying to see where my really really looking good so far we want to again do our darks So we'll get our shadow under here, like that. And that's pretty dark. Let's add some French Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Sienna. And then infuse some darks in there for that shadow. And that's the really dark shadow. We have another shadow across here. About halfway down this wall, we have another shadow, but it's not as dark, so we're going to let that go for right now. We'll get that later. But we're doing our darker shadow right there. And we'll continue on. We'll continue on with some of that beautiful clay tile roof. Over here, it's less um, we're not having as much um, over here on the left hand side of this picture, we're not having a ton of interest in trying to lead the viewer's eye over here so much. So we're not going to get too fancy over here. We're just going to sort of leave it. There's some... So here's some more... Shadow there. Shadow crosses over here and then comes down here. There we go. Look at that, beautiful. Cerulean blue. And then here what I'm doing is I'm really just using the colors that match the dark and light of the picture. So if you can imagine, I'm trying to use the colors that closely match the tonal values of the picture. So. orange and red and then over here French Ultraman we're going to make some darker darks French Ultraman blue, burnt umber so I'll put a dark over here like that. And it, all along as I go on, I'm adjusting how much water is in my brush by tapping on my tissue or my 
apron that I'm wearing. So when I rinse my brush, I dry off a little bit of water off the brush. That's always important. Keep your brush a little dry. And then you go in and get your paint. And then you can add water as you need. Now here. Okay, so now we've made quite a bit of progress. Let's take a break. Always good to take breaks. Working too long without a break, sometimes we get a little fatigued and then the next, next thing you know we're kind of having an issue with um, trying to keep things looking, uh, looking good. So... Okay, let's take a break. We'll come right back and we'll continue on our painting. And if I didn't mention, please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, we do paintings like this every week. We do flowers, landscapes, seascapes, sketchbook fun. We do figures, flowers, everything. Uh, so each week, if you want to get uh, the uh, alert, you just click subscribe and you also click the notification bell to the right of subscribe. And then that'll let you know when our new video comes out. And then you can click on it and check it out, see if you like it. If you like that painting, you can come back and uh, during the week and paint it while you're um, watching it along and uh, paint along with us here. And um, always a good thing if you subscribe, you'll be up on the latest watercolor techniques and uh, processes that we use to create beautiful watercolor paintings. Okay, so we'll come right back and we'll continue painting. Okay, so we're back and we're going to continue on painting here. Uh, we've again we've uh, we did our contour drawing. We sketched our uh, beautiful resort type uh, style painting here. We uh, we envisioned ourselves maybe we're on vacation. We're wanting to capture the beauty of the place we're staying at on vacation. Let's say a resort, a beautiful resort somewhere, uh, vacation uh, area. Uh, could be anything, could be in the mountains, could be at the beach, wherever you like to vacation. Just hypothetically, we're trying to get into the, the mood of things, the excitement. So we sit down, we get our nice uh, chair, we sit down with our sketchbook, we do a quick uh, pencil drawing of maybe the uh, villa we're staying at. And then we just take our paints out and we start to capture the the basics of things that we're looking at. We're not trying to do everything perfect. We're just trying to get really the the beauty and essence of what we're we're seeing here. So here we're just actually um, getting the lights in the darks. We got the roofs in, the palm trees, and uh, we're going to continue on here. We're going to get some more darks in here. French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. We have this uh, window here. So this window here, we can get a dark in there. And we can lighten it up just a little bit toward the bottom. And we'll paint in some more details later. And we'll paint that arch a little more here. And then we'll just blend in the dark into the lighter area here below. Just so we have a nice uh, defined arch there. And uh, might be more of an eyebrow type arch. Okay, and 
let's see what else we can do here. We can get in some more. This actually is looking pretty good. We have mostly all the dark or dark tonal values completed now. Now what we'll do is we'll start, um, we'll clean up our palette a little bit. This is where we want fresh clean water, fresh clean water in our water bucket. These darks up here I can save. I try to conserve on my paint. These greens here, I'm gonna clean up that. I'll clean up this too. So we'll kinda try to clean up our palette a little bit. I usually dip my paper towels in um, water and then just uh, makes it go a little quicker. And it's good to get these nice and dry. You don't want to leave puddles of water on your palette when you're washing and cleaning your palette as you go, because that'll just add to the paint as you, like when you're painting, you want to keep your paint you know, straight out of the tube, goopy, moist paint, but you don't want to have water, puddles of water sitting in your palette here and there. Because then when you go to put your paint on here, and if you want to keep it nice and vibrant in your colors, if they get all mixed up into the water, you're going to lose the, the exciting uh, intensity of the color if you have puddles of water in your palette. So when you're cleaning up your palette, make sure you clean it good, wash everything, and then make sure you dry up the puddles of water so it's nice and dry, and then you'll be all set to go. I left a little bit of the darks up here, that's fine. Okay, now I'll go for a little bit of a larger brush. Um, I'm gonna get a, a number six Da Vinci Maestro, and we'll, we'll get some uh, We'll get some wash on here. We have some interesting um, So now I'm going to try to mix some Some tan color, so we'll add a little yellow, cadmium lemon yellow, and some cadmium yellow to the cadmium red. That looks pretty good. Now, let's just get our wash on here. Just a nice light wash. And you can see I'm going to try to mix up that same color, raw sienna. Cadmium red, raw sienna, raw umber. I'm just trying to get and then a little bit of yellow. Cadmium lemon yellow and cadmium yellow just to get that tan color. Usually when I mix colors, I just keep mixing it until it looks about the same as what I'm looking to get. So I don't uh, go to any formula books or anything. I just start out with a few colors and then just keep going and seeing where it leads me. There might be a formula out there that says this is how you get a peach color or a tan color or a beige color or this and that. But I just use my eyes sight and look and see what it looks like. and. Usually it comes out looking pretty close to what I need. And there we have it. We've got our basic, uh, kind of like a beige tan color for the building. 
and then we're going to start to put our color in for our sky. But we won't do that right just yet. We want to let this dry a little bit, so let's do that. Let this dry. We could start though. Again, I'll shift up to a larger brush. This is a eight, number eight. I'll take some fresh clean water and just put some fresh clean water on the paper. Then also what we're going to do is so we don't, I'm going to make a damp line along the roof and the side of the building so we don't have our sky color infiltrate into the building. So if you can imagine, I'm just making a damp line. I'm taking my brush, rinsing it off with fresh clean water, drying off a little bit of the water so there's not a ton of water on my brush. And then keeping the moist line that I'm making just a little bit away from the, the orange tile roof area. So I'm not quite touching that area. I'm trying to keep it just a little bit away, maybe like a, a very fraction of a small amount away from that orange and uh, brown paint that we used for the... and the same for over here. I, just a little bit there. And the same over here. I'll do the same on this side here. Just like that. And the same for over here, this tower, it's a chimney. I'm going around the chimney with a light wash of just damp brush so that the paint doesn't flood onto the chimney. Then we go in, we have some cerulean blue, cobalt blue. Let's see how this looks. Here you want to go darker because it's going to dry lighter. So don't be afraid to go dark. Go darker than you think, especially up top. It's always interesting to have a little darker washes up top and then we let it flow down. And then we just let watercolor do what it does. Then I'll usually take a tiny bit of orange. And blend in a little tiny touch of orange there at the lower portion of the sky. Okay, that's looking very, very good. Skywash came out really good. Now we will uh, 
try to use some more of the same colors we used. Cobalt blue, maybe a little bit of purple here, and I'm going to take some of that purple and just This is Fabriano paper, so I have time to do a little bit of adding in some washes with some different colors, but that's tough if uh, we're using practice paper. Um, so let's, let's continue here. We have uh, some sap green, purple, raw sienna. We'll make up a nice... Um, shadow color, warm shadow color, cobalt blue, and then here we go. And that's all I did was make the shadow color and then just put it in across. And I drew in earlier the pencil line where the shadow was. So that's the shadow that goes across the painting, across the building. And there's more. There's a shadow here. Let's put one here. Same shadow color up here. And there's another shadow color here. The same color I'm using for the shadowing here. And it goes across here. Like that. Okay, so that's our shadowing. Now once these shadows go in, that's the perfect time when we, we want to actually um, we want to maybe take a slight break and let everything dry 100% because that could be a problem sometimes. 
there's a little bit of a warmer shadow along this side here. With some warm and cool. Same thing up here, warm and cool. And again, this is somewhat uh, You know, I consider this somewhat impressionistic. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber. I try to capture a little bit of the darker, dark shadows there. Okay, and there's some Okay, this is a perfect time. We take a break, we let this all dry 100%, and then we come back and we maybe do a little more uh, um, details, but just a few, just a few minor details after we complete this area with the shadows. So we did the shadows. And now that we have the shadows completed, um, we just let those dry and then we can do any any more details that we need to along the shadow areas But we must let those dry 100% otherwise we're going to get some really unpleasant looking um, uh, uh, Marks on the on the paper, so let's Let this dry and we'll be good All right, so we're continuing on here. We are back and excited. We're gonna clean up our palette just a little bit here. Always good to keep those uh, colors uh, fresh and exciting. We don't wanna keep mixing and muddying up our exciting colors. Let's keep our palette clean. That dark is dark there, we can leave that. We can save on paint there a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna do some final finishing touches here. So I'm going back to my number five, Da Vinci Maestro, Pure Kalinsky uh, Travel Brush. It's got a great point on it here. We will um, get some French Ultramarine Blue, Burn Umber. And I'm going to get those darkest darks underneath here.
And there's another dark there. So I'm just trying to get some of the darks that I see. And there's a couple darks here. There's a shadow here. And I see a little bit of a darker shadow here. So I just try to add that in. And if you go over a line, no big deal. You just lift it up with a tissue. And uh, I might do a couple vertical lines just really quickly. some shadowing here. Okay, that looks pretty good. And again, I'm trying to just capture those fine details here and there. And we are looking really good. Let's uh, let's use some white and yellow ochre. So I'm going to take some yellow ochre and mix it in the white of the tube. And that'll give us that little bit of a warm white, titanium titanium white with a little bit of yellow ochre. So we could do a couple highlights, maybe. Um, where did I see a few? Maybe up here. So I'm just trying to capture a few lights that I saw that I might have covered over with maybe a wash or something. That's the uh, few things I'm seeing. Uh, where else do I see a few? Over here. So again, I just take the uh, titanium white with a little bit of yellow ochre mixed in the top of the paint tube. And if you see a few things, you... A couple little touches of highlights, you add them in. And I think this... the uh, tree here, the palm tree. That looks a little bit better now. We have a little bit of that palm tree, a little better looking. And we could add a little green maybe to that and some raw sienna or yellow ochre just to and a little blue for the sky back here just to tidy up that 
edge of the building over here, that the tower portion of this beautiful resort. And we have some more yellow and gold color, raw sienna and, and uh, raw sienna and cadmium red. That same color we used to make the the um, beige color siding, stucco, it's stucco, it's like a stucco building, or plaster. And uh, we have some more shadowing here. Okay, and sometimes less is more. We don't want to keep going and overdoing it with our um, details. I do notice we could use a couple. of the uh, shadows there. Blue, French ultramarine blue and burnt sienna for some shadowing. Here I see some shadowing under here. purple for some shadowing there and some more green burnt umber and sap green And I just added a few details here. And maybe a little bit of uh, rusty, uh, cerulean blue. And then if you need to maybe capture a few um, angles with some highlight again, titanium white with a little bit of um, yellow ochre in there. See, I noticed I'm a little bit... I was off on a few angles here, so if I do that... So if we go off on a few angles, no big deal. Try to recapture them a little bit. So I try to...
extremely difficult to get everything perfect on these type of uh, drawings of like architecture. Architecture is very difficult to draw. Um, sometimes uh, we have to exaggerate things or leave out some information to make it uh, look a little better. So here I think we captured the essence of everything. And uh, we will uh, take our tape and peel off our tape and see how it looks. Okay. Okay, this looks pretty good. The light and shadow looks good. The sunlight, it feels good. The good sense of light in this painting. Um, is every architectural feature perfect on it? No. But we're just trying to get the essence of it. It's an exciting location. Let's say you're on vacation. You want to paint an architectural feature of a place you're staying at or anything like that. You just try to go for it. Get the main uh, shapes of what you're seeing. Get some paint on the paper, some shadow, some light. And then next thing you know, you have a really uh, beautiful looking painting. So this is fine. In a sketchbook, you bring home with you. You have this in your sketchbook forever. And... Um, Reminds you of your beautiful vacation you had. And, uh, you know, you can't go wrong with that. So, um, again, if you haven't subscribed, hey, everybody, subscribe. We, we create videos like this every week, every month. Each year we're making videos consistently. Hope you'll join along with us, learn new things in watercolor. We're always painting new type of paintings and styles, techniques, processes different subject matter, landscapes, seascapes, flowers, figures, cityscapes, everything. Basically, we do all styles of watercolor. Please come by, enjoy yourselves, leave comments in the comment section. If you have a quick question on anything related to these videos, to this one in particular of painting this wonderful painting, please leave a comment. Thumbs up if you like this. Thumbs down if you don't like this. Um, and uh, we'll uh, see you on the next video. Everyone, happy painting.